trying to keep it from going down the side of my trailer and scratching up my trailer. I think we got it now though. Yeah, just another example of how it's so nice to have a compact tractor. So we had a big oak tree that fell over there in uh, what was Tropical Storm Helene by the time she got to us. Now I'm not complaining because I live in Kentucky and the people down in eastern Tennessee and western North Carolina they got it a whole lot worse than we did. So no complaints here, praying for those people. But, you know, we just got some tree damage basically. So uh, see how it's just hanging on by some bark? Just a couple of strands of bark is all it's keeping that whole thing from swinging down like a widow maker. And then the main trunk broke off right there and folded over and uh, took out a maple tree with it and it's all wedged in there like this so trying to figure out exactly what to do about that uh, i think that the best thing to do because you can see how this tree has been struck by lightning in the past see that so it was kind of a weak tree anyway i'd say the best thing to do since all of that weight is tangled up over there and it's still connected up here. I personally don't think there's a lot of danger of this thing just taking off on you. I don't think it would do that in this case. So probably the best thing to do would be to get on the back side of this and cut this tree. And uh, man, the dangerous part is cutting that maple, but that maple really needs to be cut also. Uh, maybe do it from the uphill side because all this stuff would fall downhill but yeah these two trees need to be cut so that that whole conglomerated mess up there will fall down to the ground that's the only safe way to do it i mean you you don't want to get up there in a cherry picker i don't think because you don't know where that stuff is going when you cut something you know but i think it would actually be safer to just cut them from the ground like i said be on the uphill side cut your some notches in there and just kind of let that stuff just fall down uh this is our shooting range back here so we're not really close to the house, so we don't have to worry about that. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. This, this is a mess right here. When, when trees fall and they get tangled in each other, I hate that. That's, that's worst case scenario. But I mean, that's just part of living in the country, I guess. So the part of the maple tree up there that broke off when the oak fell into it, uh, we just used the tractor and hooked up to the bottom of it and pulled the whole thing out of there in one piece because it was kind of tangled up and I thought it would be too dangerous to try and cut it. So we just hooked a long chain to it, pulled the tractor way over here and then just drug it out of there as one piece. We've got one more section we're gonna try and drag out of here, but I'm having him go up to the barn and get 50 more feet of cable because I wanna make sure that we can get over here as far away from those trees as possible before we start pulling on that stuff because this next one that we're pulling is actually connected to that part up there of the uh, oak tree that's uh, still connected so when we drag that part that's stuck in the ground over there i don't know if you can see it on the camera i don't really want to walk over there at the moment uh, but that part kind of pogo stick you can see part of it right there how it's kind of pogo sticked into the ground there when we pull that out uh, i don't know where this stuff's going so I'm gonna walk over there, hook up the cable, come back over here, and we're gonna do all the work from over here, like 70 feet away. So we don't have to worry about it when this stuff you know, starts moving up here. All right, we got the tractor way over there now. So let's see if this little piece comes out or not and if it takes anything else with it
I'm gonna get out of the way. <laughs> I'm gonna get over here some more. Alright. Alright, hold up a second. I gotta go over here and re-rig this cable because this is starting to get a little sketchy. Got a hundred feet of cable on this thing. I'm staying way out of the way. There it goes. Yeah, we'll have to get some slack out of it. Well, I'm glad that we got that one out. We tore the ground up pretty bad, but it's easier to drag a large section of a tree to the burn pile and then cut it up so you can toss it right in. It's easier to do that than it is to cut it up on site and then you have a million pieces you gotta load, you know? So I'll just have to kind of grade this back out a little bit or maybe rake it. By next spring, it'll be okay. But you can see we got that one out. So that's good news. The big one right there is the one that's wedged. Uh, can't do anything about that. It's just too dangerous. Uh, but at least we got that main widow maker that we were worried about out of here. Because like I said, this is our shooting range. And you don't want to be down here with something like that overhead. So glad we got that done. We did do what I was thinking of. We took a rope tied a rock to it threw it up and over the branch and then we used the rope to put the steel cable up and over the branch and then you know, that's a hundred foot cable so it was plenty to get the tractor way over there so good deal good deal that little uh, new holland tractor is really <laughs> it's worth its weight in gold i tell you yeah so like i said here in kentucky we actually didn't have as much damage not even close really as our neighbors down there in, uh, like I said, parts of Tennessee, uh, Western North Carolina. We were just there earlier this year. We went down to South Carolina to do some wild hog hunting, you know, and, and that's the route that we took to uh, come back home. We took that route to get there, but we, when we were coming back home to Kentucky, we went right through Asheville and, you know, down into that beautiful part of Western North Carolina. And then we went up through Newport, Tennessee, uh, so we were just there earlier this year, a beautiful, beautiful part of the country, you know, and to see the, the devastation that they've had down there, it's just really sad. Um, so definitely praying for those people. I hope that uh, they can, you know, try to move forward, uh, get some of those things cleaned up. Uh, more than likely, you know, a lot of those people, their lives have been changed forever. A lot of those roads are going to take a long time to rebuild. Uh, Interstate 40 is probably going to be shut down for, I would say, maybe a year or more. I mean, that's that's some major damage down there. Uh, just really unfortunate. So, you know, our, our thoughts uh, go out to you guys. You know, uh, like I said, this tree damage that I've got here, I mean, that's no big deal uh, compared to what those, those people are going through. So, uh, like I said, our thoughts are with you. Um, you know, unfortunately... We've got some more weather potentially headed that way. You know, Panhandle of Florida up through the Carolinas and then into Kentucky, the same path as Helene just took. We've got the potential for another one. I'm filming this on Sunday following the hurricane. Uh, looks like next weekend there's a potential for another uh, tropical storm or hurricane that could take the same path according to some of the computer models. So. Let's hope that does not happen because, man, you talk about insult to injury. That would be worst case scenario. So anyway, uh, thankful to get this cleaned up, though. The little tractor really makes this kind of work easier to do. You know, we just used it to pull down the big branches and then we took the chainsaw, cut them up, throw them in the bucket of the tractor, go dump it on the burn pile, come back and get another load. It's just so much easier to do this kind of stuff with a compact tractor. Honestly, there's all kinds of jobs around here that are just easier with a compact tractor. Like I keep saying, these things are as handy as a pocket on a shirt, <laughs> as they say. Um, anyway, 
I'm going to quit rambling now. That's all I've got for now. Hopefully we can be spared from this next storm that potentially could be coming next weekend. It's so weird because we've been in severe drought all summer long, bone dry, begging for rain. This is the driest summer that I can remember in a long time uh, for this entire area, not just Kentucky, but Southeast Ohio, parts of uh, West Virginia, Virginia, down into Tennessee. I mean, it's been bone dry all summer. And then this happens, you know, it's, it's feast or famine as they say, but hopefully we can avoid another storm next week and uh, we can just move into fall and have some peaceful weather. Thanks for watching guys. I appreciate it. And we will talk to you later.